is a Wednesday morning at the premises of the Prevention and Combating Corruption Bureau, PCCB, the specialized anti-corruption agency in Tanzania, tasked with the mandate of fighting and eradicating corruption in the country. Here, we see investigators brainstorming as they seriously review the cases at hand with regard to suspected corrupt officials in the public sector. In their deliberations, they are trying to ensure that they have a watertight case before the respective matters are transferred to the Directorate of Public Prosecutions. They are also going through a process of asset seizures and forfeiture regarding confiscating the proceeds of the corruption in the respective cases. When the case has been finalized, the investigative officers submit their case files to the Director of Investigation. This is a thorough process of ensuring that the menace of corruption is tackled effectively and that corrupt perpetrators are brought to account for their illicit activities. Africa arise! Let's fight corruption In our continent In our continent Africa arise Let's fight corruption In our continent In our continent Africa, Africa, eh hey. Say no to corruption Africa, Africa, eh hey. Say no to corruption Africa, Africa, eh hey. We fight against corruption. Corruption is definitely not unique to Africa alone. It prevails globally in one form or another in practically all countries and regions. However, it has become endemic in Africa. Despite recent progress in democracy and human rights in a number of African countries, corruption remains a serious challenge and continues to exacerbate other problems. Corruption is no longer a local or domestic affair, but a transnational phenomenon that affects all societies, nations and economies. Indeed, corruption knows no borders. As such, international cooperation to prevent and control corruption is imperative. The fight against corruption continues to be a key priority for us here in Ghana. We continue to strengthen the legal and institutional framework against corruption. Madam Chair, your commission, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, is a constitutional body responsible for fighting corruption. Together with the Economic and Organized Crime Crimes Office, Yoko, and other institutions that deal with corruption in one way or the other, we continue to strengthen your organizations. Due to the lack of awareness and information on the role of anti-corruption agencies, especially as it concerns ordinary people, there is a need for anti-corruption agencies to be aware of the fact that they are not standalone agencies. Their role in fighting corruption must consider the localization of the fight against corruption to communities including civil society groups as well as engaging young people especially in schools where they can be sensitized on the fight against corruption. When we asked ordinary citizens what anti-corruption institutions are, this is what some of them had to say. Anti-corruption agencies. Ha, uh, these are people wearing dark glasses and serious suits working for the president, right? Uh, I think the police. Mm, these are not the same set of people that are using glasses that are used to follow the governor. They don't see people that put their people there. They just put their people there and they say they are fighting corruption. I don't think it can work like that. We need a new set of people to, to, to do this thing, to fight corruption. They work like undercover agents. In Botswana, you don't dare pay bribe because there's always someone working undercover from the anti-corruption agents. So everyone is more careful. 
The main role of any anti-corruption institution is to enforce each country's laws on, on corruption. Different institutions would have different roles in that enforcement. Some would investigate, make findings and advise on what should be done. Others investigate or prosecute those suspected to have been involved in corruption. However, the end result of all of them is to eliminate corruption in the continent while ensuring that those who have been involved in corruption are not left alone or are not the subject of impunity. There are oversight institutions, but some of them are empowered by the take investigations, do prosecutions, and also make sure that you know they carry out the oversight role that is supposed to be there by all the bodies like the Ombudsman, the Auditor General, and all the other oversight bodies that are there. So that key role really is to make sure that they prevent and also make teachings as far as corruption is concerned by way of public awareness as far as uh, corruption is concerned. With the role of the anti-corruption institutions defined, the question is, have we always had these anti-corruption institutions? Now, there are about 150 anti-corruption authorities across the world. More than a quarter of these come from Africa. Amongst the first countries to have established independent anti-corruption authorities were Singapore, Malaysia and Hong Kong in 1952, 1967 and 1974 respectively. By the early 90s, some 20 countries, including some from Africa, had followed in their footsteps and had established anti-corruption authorities. However, the big boom of establishing anti-corruption institutions um, across the world started after the end of the Cold War. In Africa, Tanzania was one of the first countries to establish an anti-corruption institution. The Prevention and the Combating of Corruption Bureau is the agents that was created to fight corruption in Tanzania. It has a long history. It began way back in 1971 during Mwalimu Nyerere, our first president of this country. He had a, a foresight. In the 70s, corruption was not as rampant as today. He had a foresight that corruption would become one of the major challenges. So he created through the parliament the first body was called the Anti-Corruption Squad. It came in operation in 1975, on the 1st of February of 1975. In those days, the squad really drew its officers from the police force. So the CID department seconded some of its officers to the Anti-Corruption Squad. That's how it started. Several other African countries have established anti-corruption institutions with varying mandates and powers over the years. Firstly, we start with Ghana, where the anti-corruption institution is charged. We were created in July 1993 as an institution that combines three officers, the National Human Rights Institution, the Ombudsman and the Anti-Corruption Agency of Ghana. The commission is made up of three members, the chair who is the commissioner and two deputy commissioners and directors at the various mandates, anti-corruption, human rights and administrative justice. Uh, the commission is independent. We are not under the executive, nor under the ministry, nor under the office of the president. We are independent. We don't take instructions from the office of the president. We don't take instructions from anybody. We employ our own people. We determine our standard operating procedures. Uh, we have some amount of enforcement um, powers. When we investigate, if it is prosecution, we don't have the power of prosecution. So we recommend the attorney general prosecute, but then we are allowed to take other measures against public officers. For instance, 
disqualifying the public officer from holding public office either forever or for a specific period. And if those decisions are not implemented within three months, then we seek enforcement in the High Court. And that is what the President was now referring to, that in our constitutional review, the people of Ghana said that they should give us full enforcement powers. So the reforms that have been undertaken will seek to give us those powers so that when we make a decision, we don't wait for three months and go to court, but it will directly be enforceable except that where the principles of national justice are an issue, let us another one. Next, we look at the anti-corruption institution in Burundi. La institution de lutte contre la corruption au Burundi, c'est une brigade spéciale anti-corruption dont je suis le commissaire général. Cette brigade possède aussi en sa direction un commissaire général adjoint. Quelles sont les missions ou bien comment est-ce que cette brigade a été mise sur place Elle a été créée par une loi spécifique en l'an 2006. C'est une police à compétences restreintes et exclusives en matière de lutte contre la corruption et les infractions connexes. Elle est subdivisée en commissariats régionaux qui couvrent tout le territoire du Burundi. D'une manière générale, la brigade spéciale anticorruption a pour mission de moralisation de la population, de la vie publique, à travers la sensibilisation, la prévention, la dissuasion et la répression des infractions. Il s'agit notamment de combattre le phénomène de corruption et autres crimes organisés dans une approche interdisciplinaire, intégrant les renseignements, les investigations et les poursuites. Il a aussi le rôle de constater les actes de corruption et de malversation économique et financière. Il peut saisir, il se saisit d'office et des affaires, de corruption et de malversation dont est la connaissance et qui ne font pas objet de poursuites judiciaires. La brigade spéciale anticorruption explore les doléances ou plaintes relatives aux faits soupçonnés de corruption ou d'infractions connexes. La brigade spéciale anticorruption est un sous tutelle administrative du ministère à la présidence, chargé de la bonne gouvernance et de la privatisation. Le commissaire général de la brigade spéciale anticorruption transmet au ministre un rapport trimestriel sur les réalisations de l'institution. La brigade spéciale anticorruption en République du Burundi bénéficie d'un budget de fonctionnement voté the EFCC in Nigeria is one of the prolific anti-corruption agencies in Africa, perhaps due to the exploits of the pioneer executive chairman, Nuhu Ribadu. EFCC was set up to fight the criminal financial crisis. Thereafter, the solution was extended to advance in front, advance in Fraud, money laundering, terrorism, and with these duties and with this uh, note on the FCC, a lot of money that we put on board. Of course, we have efficient operation. We have people who the department. We have assets and official department. We have. Uh, DPP, director of personnel, and we also have an internal monitoring system in DIA that monitors even the workers of the FCC, the staff of the FCC, in case they engage in anything that we could set up in corruption. So we set up. What used to be small about 10 years ago was developed to be a large commission to assist other officers, one in the US, in the Nubu, one in Patakot, in Kano, Bundu, in the Nubu. And they are putting the Ibadan office in the same structure as there, so we should start the place. So, for this year's, also we, have, we also have a department that we call FIU, that's Financial Intelligence Units. 
this particular this particular department is meant for the money laundering because it monitors the money laundering. It reports deposit transaction reports or suspicious transaction reports. When I say this suspicious transaction reports, it goes in the investigation. The couple with this one, the central bank has read also because of the Jews what we call cash debt positive policy. The 80% of transactions in Nigeria are built through banking system now. So that the whole system is being monitored by the FIB. You can't get, you can't issue me a share to collect more than 150,000 million. And if I go to my personal account, I cannot collect more than 500,000 million. So most of the Nigerian cash are in the bank. So it is to enable the FIU to monitor the movement of the cash. And this has been quite a lot of process in the we have to go through in many areas. We have to provide cases. We want to have cases. We have heard about uh, the case of the Nigeria police. We have about the uh, ministers of the government. We have about uh, the Buri case. So we have succeeded really, and uh, if I tell you for anti money for money anti money laundering this year, yeah, we secured about 34 commissions. And, and economic and financial crimes cases in this year, we secured about 54 commissions. All these things are gone. We deserve our uh, shame. We deserve our BFCC. In Burkina Faso, the Superior State Control Authority. ASCEE -E was established in November 2007 to take over the responsibilities of the former control institutions, namely the General State Inspection IGE, the High Anti-Corruption Coordination Authority HACLC, and the National Anti-Fraud Coordination CNLF. Notre mode de fonctionnement en matière de lutte contre la corruption. Nous menons des campagnes de sensibilisation au niveau de tout le pays, des administrations, des armées, des polices. Nous menons des investigations. Nous faisons de la formation, relation avec notamment la société civile. Enfin, un des points importants en matière de lutte contre la corruption, c'est que nous suivons les dossiers en relation avec la coopération internationale, notamment la Convention des Nations Unies contre la corruption avec l'ONU-DC comme chef de file et au niveau africain avec d'autres pays africains. Je suis heureux de dire qu'avec nos amis du Niger, nous avons déjà mené un certain nombre d'enquêtes conjointes entre le Burkina et le Niger. Donc moi j'encourage vraiment la coopération entre États africains. Ministerial anti-corruption units, 
the Special Criminal Court, the National Agency for Financial Investigation, and the Minister of Public Contracts and Public Regulatory Board of Public, Public Contracts. In North Africa, the fight against corruption is also a key priority with some interesting institutional arrangements, as is the case in Algeria. An office central de répression de la corruption, composé de la police judiciaire chargée de lutter contre la corruption, et nous avons une cellule de traitement du renseignement financier. Évidemment, d'autres partenaires participent au plan de lutte contre la corruption, tel que, comme je l'ai dit, le Parlement, la société civile, les médias et les autres partenaires. Je vous remercie. In South Africa, a key institution in the fight against corruption is the Office of the Public Protector, which is one of the institutions established under Chapter 9 of the South African Constitution. The Public Protector, as you may know, is one of many agencies that are involved in the anti-corruption struggle here. And we would have the Public Protector does administrative investigations with a broad mandate of impropriety in, in, in state affairs, which includes all forms of maladministration, including abuse of public resources, bribery, and related matters. Ours is to investigate administratively, make findings, and the findings are binding. And then we also have the power, as vested by the Constitution, to take appropriate remedial action. We don't have the power to prosecute, though. The Public Protector Act provides that should I make a finding that there was corruption or fraud or some other criminality, I may refer the matter to the National Prosecuting Authority for prosecution. In that way, the law creates a value chain for anti-corruption where different institutions perform different kinds of work. We increasingly also ensure that the state collects back the money as part of our remedial action. If, for example, we think that a tender was uh, uh, wrongly awarded or a bribe was paid wrongfully, through the power vested in me by Section 182.1c of our Constitution, I'm able to indicate that the money has to be paid back. That is a useful provision because sometimes taking the civil justice system to get back the money takes quite long. As part of the measures to support the work of anti-corruption agencies in fighting corruption on the continent, Article 5, Subsection 3 of the African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption specifically encourages state parties to establish, maintain and strengthen independent national anti-corruption authorities or agencies. The chef d'État and the government de l'Union africaine ont signé la Convention de l'Union africaine sur la prévention et la lutte contre la corruption le 11 juillet 2003 à Maputo. Sur les 54 États membres de notre Union africaine, il y a encore une vingtaine de pays qui n'ont pas encore ratifié la Convention pour diverses raisons. La mise en œuvre de cette Convention nécessite la prise en compte de certaines dispositions au niveau de nos, de, de nos états respectifs, par exemple l'adoption d'une loi interne pour lutter efficacement contre la corruption, la mise en place de structures nationales de lutte contre la corruption indépendantes, la mise en place d'une stratégie nationale de lutte contre la corruption, la mise en place de dispositions pour la coopération internationale en matière de lutte contre la corruption, etc., etc.
dépourvus d'évolution due à la mauvaise gouvernance politique et financière. Nos richesses volées, une éducation corrompue qui promouvoit la voyeucratie sénile dans les rues d'Afrique. Lève-toi, lève-toi Afrique et bats-toi contre la corruption qui détruit les mœurs et ton avenir.